Welcome back to Intro to Python Skills for AI Powered by Capital One. Now, this is episode two. So if you want to hear all about how variables are a very cool part of programming and as well get all set up for the series, go and click or tap right here because that is going to take you over to episode one. But if you've already seen it, welcome to episode two. This episode, we're going to be learning all about how functions are a really useful part of programming and how it stops us having to write the same code over and over and over again. Now, before we jump into that, the end of the last episode, I set you a challenge. So as a reminder, I gave you this code and I asked you to kind of, you know, work out what will happen when I run it. What will it say B is equal to? Now, some of you might have straight away looked at this and gone, oh, I know the answer. But if you didn't, don't worry. That's totally fine. Programming can be difficult. Now, I'll warn you in advance. I know fine well some of you are going to fall for my little trick here. So if you have, that's totally fine. But remember, we can run our code by typing in to our console, which if you've closed, remember, what you're going to do is tap tools and then click terminal. And we're going to run variables.py. So let's type in Python because it's a Python program, variables.py. And let's see what output I get. It says B is equal to 28. Now, if yours, if you were like kind of thinking you were going to get B is equal to 24, you probably got confused because you forgot that variables can be updated. Remember, we did set A to equal 12 on line 12. And then B is equal to A times 12, which, you know, that would be 24. Except for the fact on line 14, we updated A to equal 14. So when we time 14 by 2, we get 28. I remember in programming, once a variable has been overwritten, that's the value we use when kind of calculating things. So congratulations if you worked that out or if you managed to kind of write that bit of code yourself and get it all working. If you didn't, again, don't worry, you're going to become an absolute pro at this. It just sometimes takes a little while to get your head around it all. Now, you've done really well with variables, but let's move on to functions, which are a little bit more advanced, but I think you're ready for them. Now, a function is a block of code and we can use it over and over and over again. So for example, say we had a huge app we've developed, but we need to show someone's name in multiple places. Well, we could have a function that gets that person's name from the config and shows it. And that way, you know, we don't have to write the same code because when programming, it's very important to not repeat yourself when you can avoid it. One of the core principles is there's a thing called dry, which is literally don't repeat yourself. Now, why do you think this is? Why do you think we don't want to repeat ourselves in programming? Pause the video for a second, see if you can work it out. So the reason we don't want to repeat ourselves is because it means if we ever need to update something, it's really difficult to. Remember when we updated my variable last episode and I changed my name to potato and that was fine because it updated everywhere. Now imagine instead of it being my name being updated, it was four lines of code, but we don't store four lines of code in the variable, do we? Like we store strings and integers. And imagine how annoying it would be to have to go and update every single line of code. It would be an absolute nightmare. Our functions get us around this and you've actually used functions a few times already. When we've been printing to the console or formatting our string, that actually is a function being run in our code. Now, there's a few features of functions that I want you to know about. Again, it's okay if you need to rewind this and go back over it because it took me a little while to get my head around it. But one of the core parts of functions is the fact they all have a name. And when we type their name, we call the function. All that means is we use the function. So for example, the name of the print function is print and the name of the format function is format. And then the other really core cool part of a function is parameters. Now we can give the function a variable or multiple variables to use. For example, when we use the print function, everything inside the brackets, that's a variable which we're passing into our function. Okay, so do you remember how I said last episode that the best way to learn how to code 
is by coding rather than just talking about it, then let's go and code. And we're going to do it in the functions.py file, just because we don't need all of this variable stuff anymore. So let's head into functions.py. And you'll notice it's a bit of a blank canvas, but don't be worried about this. I'm going to help you every step of the way. Now, what we're going to do in here is we're going to make a function that says hello to someone. So first up, we're going to create a variable and it's going to contain your name. Then we're going to create or define a function called say hello. And what this is going to do is it's going to print hello name. Simple as that. Then we're going to run that function a few times in different ways. Okay, but first up, let's do the first step. Can you remember how you create a variable called your name and put your name in it? See if you can do that for me on line one. Okay, so what you do is you type in your, remember we can't have spaces in our name, so we can say your underscore name. Now, as a bit of a spoiler, you also can't have spaces in functions names. So we use the same trick using an underscore instead. Then we set the value using equals, and then I'm gonna put in my name, you can put in yours. And remember, because it's a string, we put it in quotes. Okay, so that's great and all, but now we need to go and actually make our function. Now, remember I used the word define? That's because we define our functions in the code using DEF or DEF. So I'm saying define a function, and our function is going to be called say hello. So say underscore hello. And because it's a function, we pass in parameters in brackets. Now, parameters, remember, are just variables. They're just variables we use inside our function. So don't let that word scare you. And we're going to create a parameter called name. And finally, we're going to put a colon at the end of our line to say, hey, the function is now starting. Now, why did we call it name instead of your name? Because the variable we set on line one is called your name, right? Well, that's because we don't always want to pass in that variable. We could pass in any string, really. It doesn't really matter. The reason we set our name at the top is for later on. You'll quickly see why. Okay, so let's press enter and let's add some contents to our function. But when I press enter, it's taken me a bit in. It's indented me. Why do you think it's done that? So the reason is, is because when we're coding, the easiest way to kind of see where we are is to inside functions and you know, inside conditional statements, which you'll learn about in a bit, don't worry. Um, we indent them. And that's just so it's easy to read. Now, imagine you had a load of code and it was all just one on top of another. And it'd be really difficult to see, you know, when the code is in the function and when it's not. So we indent it so we can tell. Also, unlike some languages, Python will have an error if you don't indent your code. So it's not actually optional in Python. Okay, so on this line, I'd like you to print, hey there, and then name passed in using the name parameter. So see if using the print function, you can remember how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna type in print, as you probably did too. And then I'm gonna open my brackets because remember, that's where we put in our parameters. And I'm gonna say, hey there. Now you might have done plus and concatenated your strings. That's fine. But I'm gonna use a format function. So I'm gonna say, hey there, curly brackets, exclamation mark, okay? And then I need to format that string. So I'm gonna say com uh, dot format. And I'm going to format using name. So whatever value is passed in here is going to say, hey there, and then whatever name. Okay, that's great. I've created a function. It's, it's amazing. But we haven't actually used our function anywhere. All we've done is created it. So let's go and run it. When we go to our next line, it's going to take us line five and it's going to still be indented. But we don't want to run our function inside a function. We just want to run our function normally, right? So we press it again, just to give us a nice bit of white space, make it really obvious and readable in our code. And then press backspace, it should take us back to the start of the line without any more indentation. Okay, pause the video and see if you can remember how to run say hello. And I'd like you to say hello using your name. Okay, so if I type the function say hello, remember? 
and then we open our brackets and then, okay, we conveniently have a variable containing our name. So I'm going to type your name because that's our variable. Okay. Now let's open our console and see if that works. Now remember we're in functions.py this time. So we need to run in that file instead of running variables.py. So let's do Python functions.py. And it says, Hey there, Jacqueline. Okay. That's awesome. But what if I didn't want to say, Hey there, me, like, obviously I can change that variable. That's useful and all I can change it to say any name, but what if I want to keep that variable the same and just run the function using cat, for example, who's someone else who works at MLH. How would I do that? Well, it's as simple as running the function again and saying, say hello, and then just pass in a string of that name. So I'm going to say cat. Remember strings are in quotes. So now when I run this code, you'll see it says, Hey there, Jacqueline and Hey there, cat. Super easy, right? Okay. So I'm going to set you a bit of a challenge and this might be a bit of a difficult one, but I think you can do it. I'd like you to add a second parameter to our say hello function. And I want that parameter to contain a number. And that's going to be the number of cookies that person has eaten today. I then would like you to include a number of cookies in the string that we then print out. So give that a try. Okay. So to add a second parameter, what we do is we add a comma after name. So we say comma and it's going to be amount of cookies eaten. So I'm going to say amount of cookies. Okay. That's great and all, but then we need to go and get the amount of cookies into the string. So let's go after the exclamation mark and say, you've eaten curly brackets cookies today. Okay. And remember, just like how up here we say comma to add a second parameter on format, we say name comma, cause it's our second parameter amount of cookies. Now this could be the other way around if our wording was the other way around, but in format, remember, our name is this first one. Now cookies is the second one. It's as simple as that. So now when I run this, it's not going to work because, oh no, I need to pass in two arguments. Say hello only takes two arguments and I've only passed in one. So let's go and update my code. So I'm going to say I've eaten 12 cookies today because I really like cookies, but cats only eaten two. So now when we run it, it's going to say, Hey there, Jacqueline, you've eaten 12 cookies today. And hey there, cat, you've eaten two cookies today. Now, two is not a very big number. So let's make these super duper amazing cookies, which automatically double. Now, how do we go and do math with variables? Can you remember? So inside def, before we print the amount of cookies, let's go and do some math. So we can do amount of cookies. And a really useful trick is we can say it's actually equal to amount of cookies. So it's self times two. Pretty smart, right? So that way, you know, we're not having to create another variable we don't need. We're just updating the amount of cookies because these are magical cookies which duplicate. So now when we run our program, it's going to double it. It'll say you've eaten 24 cookies today and hey, my cat, you've eaten four cookies today. Evidently, I like cookies a lot more than Kat does. Okay, you've done really well to get that function made, but one final thing we need to do is make sure we're documenting our code. Now, remember when we talked about comments earlier and how I mentioned that comments are like notes for you? Well, let's add a note for ourselves at what this function does. With this few amount of lines, it doesn't hugely matter, but when you have a big long program with hundreds and hundreds of lines in a function, then you're going to really appreciate it if you've got a comment explaining it. So remember to create a comment, we say hash and then whatever our note is. So I'm going to say this function says hello to someone and says how many cookies they've eaten today. You can put anything there, remember, because it's just a note for yourself and other people working on the projects. You've done really well to make that function, but 
I think it's time for a bit of a challenge. I think you're ready to make one all by yourself. So my challenge for you is to write a function. It's going to take two parameters. It's then going to multiply them together and it's going to print out the result. I'm going to tell you how to do that next episode, but give it a try and see if you can manage to do it all by yourself. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in episode three.